How's it going, everybody? This week, we received a rumor that some new creative talent is on its way to the Star Wars franchise. And this particular one, I really hope it's true. So this week, we got a rumor that Damon Lindelof is heading over to Star Wars. In the past, he has expressed interest that this was an IP he wanted to work with, but now we're seeing a rumor that that actually may be coming to fruition. Now, Damon has a substantial history with the science fiction genre, um, a lot of success and maybe some swings and misses, depending on who you're asking. But for me, anytime I see somebody that has created a piece of content that ends up being one of my favorite things of all time, if that person is coming over to my all time favorite franchise, I can't help but be excited. So let's discuss how Damon fits into the Star Wars universe. So back in the heyday when Lost was premiering and everyone was hooked and everyone was going crazy of the newest sensation from JJ and Damon Lindelof, it uses the so-called mystery box type of storytelling where they more or less throw out and dangle these mysterious elements to you, like, I don't know, like polar bears on an island. Guys, this isn't just a bear. It's a polar bear. And it causes the viewer to really start thinking like, what is that? Like your mind starts going crazy. And when it's used effectively, it is a great tool for storytelling. It can also be a very brutal and crappy tool because sometimes it feels like they never knew what they were doing in the first place and they were just trying to jam a bunch of cool stuff in there. Um, so speaking of Lost, Lost started off sensationally, I think, well, for myself, I think a lot of people felt that too. And by the time Lost wrapped up, it was like, wait, what the heck did, they, did happen? Like, I thought the last season of Lost, and particularly the finale, was very, very underwhelming. Um, and it almost seemed like they had no idea what they were originally ever going to do with that show. But Lost being one of the first projects he worked on. So down the road, he co-created a series and wrote a lot of the episodes for The Leftovers. And I'd be lying if I wasn't making this video just for an excuse to gush over The Leftovers. But if you have not watched The Leftovers, you are seriously missing out on potentially the one of the greatest shows ever made. And I'll admit, it takes a certain person to get into it. But if you're into it, then there might be no other greater show for you. Let me know in the comments. Did you watch The Leftovers from start to finish and where you kind of rank it in your hierarchy of TV shows? Because for me, overall, it's definitely... It's pushing my top five probably like I, and it's a show that if you explain the concept and premise to me, I probably would be a little wishy-washy on it, but it was everything about The Leftovers was sensational. Again, the, the whole mystery box at the beginning of the series with, you know, the disappearance, where'd everyone go, but just the writing and the storytelling and the acting, everything was top notch in this. You felt so much emotion through what these people had to go through and then one of the few series to knock the finale out of the park. Like, no zero complaints on my end for how well done this series was. So I can't help but think, if he's capable of making that, what could he possibly do in the Star Wars universe? Now, he has worked on the, you know, the other big space IP, Star Trek, and I'll be honest with you guys, I he had involvement with obviously the first Star Trek, with it, which I think was pretty well received. But Into Darkness, um, I'll be honest, I've actually think I've only ever seen it once, and it was in theaters. And I can't remember. I know it's probably I know it's probably the weaker one in a lot of people's opinions. But I can't remember how I felt about it either way. The fact that I haven't watched it again probably means I was probably a little underwhelmed. All I remember from that movie is I knew going in that Benedict Cumberbatch was going to be was going to be con. I I you knew from the trailers, you knew from anything you read, and I remember sitting in there and when they had the scene where he was revealed, my name is Khan. There was a super Star Trek fan singing in front of me and I have never heard someone gasp that loud. I my 
my, my wife was sitting next to me and hysterically laughed when she saw it happen. Um, it was just, it was just funny. Anyways, <laughs> I think he has enough experience and has learned enough over the time that he could create something special in Star Wars. So for one, I think with his style of storytelling, I'd rather him not play with established characters and narratives. I think giving him his own timeline, his own you know unique area for him to just yeah, here's the Star Wars universe, here's the world, create your own thing in it. Um, you know, one standalone movie, I don't think potentially would do justice. I to be honest, I think a Disney Plus series would probably be the best route. Cause I don't know if they're going to be handing out trilogies to people, you know, these days. Um, but I definitely think it's a fit, you know, and sometimes writers and directors have favorites of people they've worked with in the past. And again, going back to leftovers, JT, man, JT is awesome. And yes, and for those who didn't realize, JT actually has a role in Star Wars. He was in The Last Jedi as the Master Codebreaker. He was the red plum bloom dude who basically got five seconds of screen time rolling some dice or whatever the heck he was doing in the casino. You know, if Damon does come over to Star Wars, he could easily give JT a role that actually lets him showcase his acting ability. And then thinking about timelines and where he could actually have his story set, like I'd love to see something way back in the past. Um, I know there was rumors once upon a time. I don't know if everything, anything came about it, but having stories around like the very first Jedi or the first Sith or something like that. But I think something like that, like something a little more, you know, um, mysterious, right? <laughs> Given his style of storytelling, I think would be pretty, pretty cool to see coming from uh, Damon Lindelof. So that's my thoughts on Damon joining Star Wars. I think he has the right resume and I think he could give a unique take um, on the franchise. Like I'd love to see, you know, different stories and different genres explored. So I've talked about this before. Um, you know, I'd love to see a Star Wars horror movie. We know Scott um, Derrickson just last year said he'd want to make a horror movie on Hoth. <laughs> And I think that's a fantastic idea. And the cool thing is a lot of the stuff, like I, I feel like we just need that one, that one breakthrough idea that gets green lit. Like just think about the horror movie on Hoth, for example. Um, it doesn't have to be tied to any characters, anything like that, um, set on Hoth, right? But you can be like, well, you can make any horror movie on any ice planet. It doesn't have to be Star Wars, just make it up. But the cool thing about having it set in Star Wars though, is like, for example, like say it's set post empire, right? You can see, you have little Easter eggs, like here's the remains of the rebel base. You could have in the background, you could have like, you know, some at at walkers that are all destroyed. Kind of like, you know, Jakku had the Star Destroyer. Like you can dress up the environment with Star Wars. You can use Star Wars tech, right? Like, you know, you're gonna have your laser blasters. You're gonna have other stuff. You know, not that, not that you'll have lightsabers, but uh, well, I guess, I don't know, maybe you could, maybe they find a lightsaber, but like you get to tell a unique story, dressing it up in all those Star Wars things. So it will, you know, it could easily be a standalone thing, never affect the greater plot that's going on. Um, and, you know, maybe one day Disney will let them slap an R rating on something like that. Um, not that everything has to be rated R, but I think there's a few genres and things you could do that could be rated R, just like you can go the complete opposite direction with it as well and make, you know, some very kid specific stuff like they did with uh, the Resistance series, right? So that's my thoughts. I, you know, I'm excited. I hope they open Star Wars up to a lot more different creatives and with different styles and they have kind of been doing that, but hopefully, you know, we can, you know, we don't necessarily have to just follow the formula, right? Like Dave and John are doing their thing, which is great. They're have all this connectivity going on with the story group, make sure everything fits. That's great. That's the main storylines. We love it. But there's no reason why we can't have some stuff sitting on outside of that stuff as well. Because um, I, I, there must be hundreds and hundreds of interesting ideas and story ideas you could potentially do um, that fans would love. So anyways, that's my long rambling thoughts on that. Let me know in the comments, do you want to see Damon Lindelof in Star Wars? Were you a fan of The Leftovers? And where does it rank for you 
in your top TV series. Peace out, everybody. We'll see you on the next video.